Perfect. I think there was a little bit of difficulties. Great. Hello. Glad to see you all here. Let me also open your chat so that I can see you guys. Awesome. So great. Lesson. This is what we are going to do today. It is Halloween, as you can see. Let me let me let me show you my decoration. Here it is. What we are going to do now is that I'm going to teach you some vocabulary. Let me turn a little bit this way. Yeah, so that the background light does not disturb us. Yeah, that's much better. Sorry for the technical difficulties and issues I've been going through. I don't know why it happened. I had practiced yesterday, but uh, you see, things happen. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to present a slideshow, all right? So you will see what I am going to teach you. And I want you to make sentences with the new vocabulary and the new idioms that we are going to learn. I will have a look at the chat box. So I will try to read your examples and then if there are any mistakes, I will help you correct them. All right. Now, there is a little bit of delay, about five seconds between what I say and what you see. So sorry for that. I don't know why it happened. But anyways, let's begin the lesson. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to this live. Hello from Turkey. Lots of people from Uzbekistan. Nice. India. All right. Let's get going. So let me share the presentation with you. There it is. So just a second. Just a second. I have to go one slide back. Spooky Halloween vocabulary. This is what we are going to talk about. Spooky Halloween vocabulary. And this logo is 100% designed by myself. Very, very beautiful logo. Now, you know, the uh, Halloween celebration is about knock, knock, treat or trick or trick or treat, which is which basically means you either treat me chocolates generally, or I play a trick on you. That is the whole celebration of Halloween. There are costume parties that people go to. So you basically dress up as witches or ghosts or scary creatures. I have some right here with me. So you dress up. Oh, I have the spider web. What else do I have here? I ordered this kit online. Oh, that's that's a witch hat. So basically you dress up as weird creatures. And then this is so small for me. This was designed for a child. And then you celebrate the Halloween. Now, I used the Halloween celebration, the, the, this festival, this, uh, this day, in order to teach you some spooky and scary English vocabulary and phrases and idioms. Let's get started. You look cool and handsome. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. So guys, as I go forward in the presentation, I want you to make sentences in the comments, all right, in the chat. Let's go on with the first slide. So when something scares you, when something scares you, for example, this mask of Frankenstein, when you see it, it scares you. Why? Because it is, well, a simple adjective is to say it is scary, all right? You can say it's a scary, but, oh my God, this is giving me a headache. Just a second. Really? You gotta be kidding me. All right, this is what I have to do. I have to scroll down. So, oh, why did it scroll down so much? Sorry, really sorry, guys. I don't know why it happened. Okay, okay, let's begin from the top, people. When something scares you, you are afraid of it. Okay, let's let's start the lesson from here. So, be afraid of is the first word we're going to learn. You might already know it, but let's go through a few examples here. He was, look at the first example. He was suddenly afraid. It was like, <gasps> he was suddenly afraid. Instead of was, instead of be, you can also use feel. 
He felt suddenly afraid. Okay, he was afraid. He felt afraid. Next is I've always been afraid of. Pay attention to the preposition. Be afraid of. I've always been afraid of flying. I've been afraid of heights. I've always been afraid of spiders. Do I have a spider here? Yes. I've always been afraid of spiders. True story. I'm terrified of spiders. Really. Now, you can use afraid with infinitive, as you can see in this example. Don't be afraid to say what you think. Now, in this case, you are not afraid of saying what you think. You are afraid to do something. You are afraid of acting. You are afraid of an action. In this case, you can say, don't be afraid to say what you think. Let me have a look at the comments. What are... Okay, good, good question in the comments, guys. What is your phobia? Or what phobias do you have? About me, well, I... Let's say, I'm, I'm not afraid of heights, but I have a phobia of airplanes. They really freak me out. I, I always travel by train, but if I really have to, and if I really need to go by plane, if it's a long distance trip or if I'm in a hurry, I go on an airplane, but for the entire duration of the flight, I'm like, oh my God, we're shaking. Oh, we're falling. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, please God, I'm so young. So, sorry, airplanes, they, 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 they terrify me. I'm afraid of flying. I'm really afraid of flying. So, other people, what have you said? I'm afraid of darkness. I'm afraid of the dark. I phobia to deep water. No, I have a phobia of. That would be better. What is your favorite accommodation which had a freight from there? Can you see the scrap? What? I, I, I actually didn't get your comment. Your action is funny. Thanks. I try to act as I speak so that you can understand what I say. And this is a scary lesson. So I'm trying to act as much as I can, right? Uh, don't be afraid of mistake. Don't be afraid of making. Good point, guys. Good point. Very good point. Be afraid of. Of is a preposition, right? When you have a preposition and you have a verb after the preposition, you need to use gerund, which means verb plus ing. Be afraid of verbing, all right? So don't be afraid of making mistakes. You love darkness, Akbar Hakim Saleh? Really? I've never seen someone who likes the dark. I'm afraid of dead people. Oh, who is not? Who is not? Uh, what is your favorite Halloween costume? I don't, I don't really, I, I've never thought about my favorite. I like dressing up as a ghost or as the witch king. By the way, speaking of the witch king, which was in the Lord of the Rings, after this video, I am going to share, after this live lesson, I'm going to share an amazing video that I worked on. It's just about one minute long. It's a teaser I created. It's amazing. And I really loved it. I made it with the lowest, let's say, um, equipment possible, with the, with the very limited set of equipment that I had. So I think, I think this is very nice. It's about Halloween. The Witch King comes to my house. And it's a very nice story. You've got to watch it. Let's move on, guys. Let's move on to the next slide and I hate this but I have to do it like this all right next be frightened of so it's the same as saying be afraid of you can also say be frightened of the same meaning guys it's a bit more formal but the same look at the examples she gets frightened when he shouts at her look at those also look at the beautiful picture I selected for you it's like, ah! she gets frightened when he shouts at her the police officer found a frightened child in the hut are you frightened of spiders i am i personally am i was frightened that you would fall or i was frightened that the airplane might crash and the last one don't be frightened to complain if the service is bad. 
So if, if you go to a restaurant and they have bad service or the food is terrible or you find, you know, a piece of hair in your food, don't be, a, don't be frightened to complain, okay? Now, let me hear your examples with be frightened of. Do you have a Telegram channel? I used to, but not anymore. Not many people join Telegram. So I'm only available here on YouTube for you. Make examples, guys, with being frightened. I'm frightened of driving speedily. You could say driving fast and carelessly. Yes. Yes. I am. I'm not frightened of it. I'm amused by it. I love driving and I love driving fast. I know it's bad, but I love it. Don't be frightened to ask a question. Bravo. Vardhan Pop9, if I pronounce your name correctly. That was not your name, that was your ID. Anyway, I'm frightened of speaking in public. Good, good, but don't be frightened of speaking in public. I mean, it's okay, it's natural to be frightened, but it's really fun. Just take it easy. I'm frightened of drowning. Oh, yes. I, have you ever had a dream? in which you are drowning and then you, you know, you're choking and then you cannot breathe anymore and then you wake up. It's, it's one of the most frightening dreams you can have. Do you have TikTok? Yes, I have TikTok. You can uh, search for POC English, my channel. I'm frightened when cockroach, whoa, my God. You are frightened when cockroaches fly? Me too, I'm terrified of it. I'm frightened of speaking in public. I'm frightened of my comments not read. Joe B, don't worry. I, I read all the, I try to read all the comments, guys. I'm, uh, I'm frightened of snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they really, you know, serpents, snakes, they, they, they freak me out. All right. Moving on. Thanks for all the comments, guys. I really appreciate your engagement. Be scared of. So be afraid of, be frightened of, and now be scared of. This is the third way you can, oops, sorry. Uh -huh, there we are. This is the third way you can actually express your fear. So let's see the examples. He's scared of spiders. I have the spiders here. Oh, I also have another thing. I have a witch's broom. So you can sit on it and fly. This is also something I really found interesting. All right. So, he's scared of spiders. It's like, <gasps> scared of, pay attention. I'm scared of telling her what really happened. Pay attention. Scared of telling. Again, after prepositions, we have gerund. I'm scared of telling her what really happened. Okay. He, now, pay attention to this one. He's scared to tell her what really happened. And compare it with the previous one. I'm scared of telling her. He's scared to tell her. The second one is not ing. This is not gerund. All right. Be scared to do an action. I'm scared to talk to her, to tell her the truth. Or I am scared of telling her the truth. Next one. I was scared that you might not be there. I was scared that the plane might crash. All right. And the last example, she had a scared look. Pay attention to this one. She had a scared look on her face. Look at her face. <gasps> she had a scared look on her face. Now, your comments. I'm scared about death. Scared about? No. Scared of. Fateme Hazare. If I pronounce your name correctly. I love your videos. Thanks. I get scared of my friend who yells at others. Yeah. If your friend yells at others, it's terrible. I've been scared of mouse. Are you still scared of mouses? Of mice? So you have to say, I'm scared of. I have been scared of means for a period of time you've been scared of it. You probably are not scared of them anymore. So it's better to use simple present. I have scared to earthquake. I am. Pay attention. Pay attention, guys. I am scared of earthquake, okay? I'm scared of math. Interesting. 
I'm frightened of speaking with strangers or I'm scared of speaking with strangers. Yeah, I'm scared seeing my bills. <laughs> Tell me about it. Especially in this period of time, energy is really expensive. I'm scared of telling him my love or I'm scared of telling him how I feel, right? I'm scared of my mother. <laughs> yeah, you know, normally mothers, especially in Asian countries, they, they come with, you know, slippers. So you have to be scared of them and you have to respect them. Always listen to your mom. I'm scared of being lonely or losing someone. That's terrible. That's, I'm frightened of it. I'm scared to, I'm scared to exams. I'm scared of exams. I'm scared of giving exams. All right. Or taking exams. I'm scared of living lonely, Joby, right? You were afraid that I wouldn't read your comments. Now you see, I read it twice. I'm scared of slippers. Yeah, yeah, you should be. And I'm scared of thunderstorm. Thank you very much, guys. Let's move on. Moving on to the next one. Be terrified of. Another way of saying be afraid of, be scared of, be frightened of. And now be terrified of. Look at the picture I chose for you. That really shows the vocabulary, right? So... Let's read the examples. He sat in the corner like a terrified child. I'm terrified of the dark. Or the last example, she's terrified that her mother might find out her secret. Now, let's hear your examples with be terrified of. <claps> Greetings from Australia, cool cat. What's the difference between have been frightened or am frightened of? Well, normally, if something is happening, if you are describing how you feel right now about a thing, you say, you use simple present and say, I am afraid of, all right? You don't say, I've been afraid of, if you are afraid of something right now. So if I have a phobia of, I think it is called arachnophobia, not really sure. If you have a phobia of uh, spiders, these little dudes, I mean, this one does not seem scary. Because I am afraid of it right now, I use simple present, right? So I, I don't use present perfect. Greetings from India. I'm terrified of height, acrophobia. I am terrified of swimming, really, that's really fun. Maybe you're terrified of drowning. I'm terrified of slippers, you should be. I've been terrified of war. You are terrified of war because war is always terrifying. That's the next uh, thing we're going to get to. The, ne the next part of the presentation. I am terrified of political, of politicians of, of, or of politics. Are you terrified of me? Really? Well, maybe you're terrified of the way I handle the, the, the slipper. I'm terrified of the harm of horror movies in general, right? I'm terrified of heavy loaded vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe huge lorries. Where are you now? I'm in Milan. I am in Milan right now, Italy. I am terrified of solving mathematic questions. <laughs> good one, good one. I'm terrified of zombies. I'm terrified of losing my favorite things. Yes. He's scared of wars. Yeah, yeah, we are all scared of war. It's a terrible thing. I'm terrified of rain? Really? I'm scared of speaking in front of the classroom. Yes, that can be scary to some people. I'm terrified of hot weather. It's not terrifying. Perhaps you hate it. But are you really terrified? It's like, oh, today is really hot. <gasps> All right, let's move on. I'm terrified of exams. I'm terrified of... Bochil Kemachian? Kemachian? What is that? Let's move on. All right, guys. Next. Be petrified of. Now, this is a bit advanced. This is a bit, uh, let's say, the level is higher. Uh, to be petrified of something means to be extremely afraid of something or worried about something. You are petrified of it. Look at the example. She is petrified of being on her own in the house at night. She is, listen again, she is petrified of being, and pay attention to the grammar, of being, of verbing, of going, of eating, of drinking. 
She's petrified of being on her own in the house at night. Your turn. I am petrified of my mother. <laughs> What did your mother do to you? Perhaps some harsh punishment. Uh, I'm terrified of losing my confidence while speaking English in front of someone. But the way you write is very good, Natish Kumar. Your writing was good. Great example. I am petrified of writing exam, of taking exams. Right? I petrified. I am petrified. I am petrified of scary movies. Of watching scary movies, perhaps would be better. I am petrified of going to the dentist. Yes, the sound, the 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 the, the sheer volume of the sound of the device kills me. It's like. I'm petrified of losing my beloved ones. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm terrified of going somewhere along alone. You mean? I'm petrified that sometimes I can't speak in public places. He's petrified of losing me. Good example. <laughs> Why do you speak very well? Well, first things. Second, the question is somehow strange. You want me to speak less well? Uh, I'm petrified of war. Yeah, I am petrified of operations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm petrified of taking the IELTS exam. That's a that's a very lovely exam. All right, moving on, guys. Thanks for your engagement. I love it. You are giving me a lot of energy. Now, second part. So far, we talked about our feelings, right? So if something. Let me give you a clear example. This is Frankenstein, right? Is it?、Uh, let, let's get back to the example of the spider. This is a spider on its web, and it scares me. If I want to describe my feelings about this, I say I am afraid of, I am frightened of, I am scared of, I am terrified of, I am petrified of this spider. Why am I? Petrified of it. Why am I terrified of it? Why? Because this spider is. It's. That's the second part of the presentation. It's a scary, right? What other ways do we have? Instead of scary, we can say frightening. Frightening. Also, try to repeat after me. I know I cannot hear you, but you can hear me. So try to repeat as I am reading the new words. To you, right? Frightening. For example, a frightening thought. I am thinking about killing my friend. Oh no, that's a frightening thought. A frightening film or a frightening movie. For example, The Blair Witch Project. I don't know if you've seen it. Or Conjuring. Right? Or any other film? The Boy. The Nun. These are frightening films and frightening movies. Or the last example, it is frightening to think what might happen if she left him. It is frightening to think what might happen if she left him. Your examples, guys. Tell me what is frightening in your opinion. Intimidating. That's also a very good, very good word. Uh, I met this man already. Really, learning new culture. What's your name? Have we met? A dentist is such a frightening person. Yes, yes, good example. Frightening to kill the that man. It's it's frightening to see someone die. For example, I'm frightened to drive. You are frightened to drive. Tell me what is frightening for you. For example, driving fast is frightening. I don't want to go there. It's frightening. Perfect. It is frightening. The movie Smile is frightening. Yes. Have I seen it? No, no, no. I've seen Scream. That's my frightening is to live alone. Living alone is frightening. It's frightening to be in the dark. Cute and soft. Bravo. Dark entertainment has said, "Can we meet? Meat is something you eat. <laughs> meat with double e. Sure, why not? If you are here in Milan, police are frightening. Yeah, maybe. Well, I personally disagree. They are not, but they can be. You look so frightening. Oh, do I? 
Let me let me put on my Frankenstein mask with with my let's say yeah with my hat with my witch's hat and I look frightening. There are lots of frightening teachers, however, you are the best in the world. Thanks. Ghosts are frightening. Very good. Bravo guys. Let's move on. I want to keep it short and sweet, but at the same time I want your engagement. Spooky. I love this word. Spooky. Spooky means scary, means frightening. Look at this picture. This is the best way I can explain it. You see this picture? You kind of feel afraid of this picture. But why? Can you explain? No. That is the meaning of spooky. Something that makes you afraid, something that, you know, sends shiver down your spine, but at the same time, you don't know why it, it looks scary. You see? So that's kind of spooky. It has a feeling, right? It gives you a kind of spooky feeling. Look at the examples. It was a spooky coincidence. What a spooky house. Or, for example, Halloween. Can you see the decoration? I can't see myself. Yeah. Halloween is a spooky holiday, right? Examples, guys. With spooky. Me either. I love to sit spooky. I, I really didn't get it. Sir, what is means of lone wolf? Lone wolf? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with our presentation now, but it means someone who enjoys being alone. That house looks spooky. Bravo. That's... Uh, that's a spooky night. Yeah. Some forests around the world look spooky. Excellent. This picture is so spooky. Amazing. Spooky house. The pumpkin behind you is very spooky. I know. Wait a second. I have another pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin. It's a balloon. But it's a spooky. Right? It's very spooky. You don't know why, but it kind of... When you, when you look at its eyes, you know... You kind of feel afraid. While blowing the balloons for you, I accidentally, you know, one of them, this happened and I cannot hear very well. The sound was so loud. There was an explosion of a balloon here. Examples, guys. How spooky forest it is. That's an inverted sentence. You can say, how is spooky a forest is. It's a spooky way. A spooky road. The clowns are spooky. Yes. If you have seen the movie It. This monkey is spooky. Yeah. The place is spooky at night. Great. Moving on. Another way to, 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 to describe something which you are afraid of is to say it's terrifying. For example, look at this picture. As you can see, this is a roller coaster. And a roller coaster, which you can find in an amusement park, to me, is really terrifying. I am terrified of riding a roller coaster. Tell me what you find terrifying. A spooky teacher in front of me. Yeah, I am. That is spooky. Please read my tense. I shall work. I don't see any sentences. Swimming in an ocean is terrifying. Yes. Give me examples with mm, terrifying. Failing an exam is terrifying. It's a terrifying experience. Very good. Some people look spooky. Driving a car at 200 kilometers per hour is terrifying. It is. Any spooky stories will definitely make someone scared. Life is terrifying. Very philosophical example. Uh, the movie was terrifying. Which movie? That dark hallway is so terrifying. I'm terrifying of... Pay attention. I'm not terrifying of riding a bike. I am terrified of riding a bike. Why? Because riding a bike is terrifying. You see the difference? Losing my friend was terrifying. So sorry for your loss. Feeling in love is terrifying. It can be. When I go to in front of the mirror, is <laughs> when you go in front of the mirror, it's terrifying. Play with playing with a snake is terrifying. <laughs> Amazing examples, guys. Seeing a nearly dead person is terrifying. Yeah. A typhoon is terrifying. 
test is the most terrifying thing for students. Agree with you. Solving puzzle is terrifying. Ah, uh, that's that's actually confusing and perplexing and fun and kind of boring, but not terrifying to me. Math class is terrifying. I love your examples, guys. I'm terrified of spooky professors. Spooky professors. Maybe I am a spooky professor. Am I? I don't know. I can be. Let me catch my breath for a second. Okay, moving on. Scary, the simplest adjective you can use. So I'm not going to stay on this slide a lot. I watched a really scary movie last night. And you already know. Now, part three, phrases and idioms. So far, we have learned how to describe something that is terrifying and how to express our feelings when we are terrified of something, right? In this next part, we are going to talk about phrases and idioms, which I personally love. They are so good. So if you have a notepad, if you have a, a notebook and a pen, get ready. This is a very good chance that you can write them down, learn them, practice them, make sentences so I can read them. And if you make any mistakes, I will try to correct you. I like scary movies. Notebook is good. Yes, it is good. Swimming in the, in the river is terrifying to me. Speaking English is terrifying. Tiger? It's not. Forgetting things are terrifying. Forgetting things is terrifying because you forget. Forget is singular. An earthquake in Japan is terrifying. It can be. All right, all right, all right, all right. Moving on. Moving on. Let's get to part three, phrases and idioms. A terrifying ordeal. This is very good, guys. Pay attention. What is an ordeal? Ordeal is a very unpleasant and painful or a difficult experience. That is an ordeal. All right. Now, we have a very good collocation. A terrifying ordeal. Just a second. Let me just scroll up a little bit. A terrifying ordeal which means a terrifying experience. This is a very interesting collocation. I want you to make examples with it. Look at the sample sentence. Her seven month stay in the hospital was quite a terrifying ordeal. It means her long stay in the hospital was a very terrifying experience. Examples. Ordeal, it's hard, sir. Ordeal means an unpleasant experience. Riding that roller coaster is terrifying. You can say riding that roller coaster is a terrifying ordeal. Was a terrifying ordeal. What is the time in your country? Right now it's 3.40. Ordeal meaning? Uh, read the slide. Read the slide, guys. A very unpleasant or painful, difficult experience. By the way, guys, do you see the slideshow that I am showing you? I hope you do. And I think you see. Congratulations for 1 million subscribers. Thanks to you guys for subscribing to my channel. I will try to help you as much as I can. Uh, so, make a sentence with a terrifying ordeal. Losing someone important is a terrifying ordeal. Great. Is exam an ordeal? Yes, it's a, it's a, you can say that exam was a, quite an ordeal, which means it was an unpleasant experience. Studying at lecture lessons are terrifying ordeal. Thinking of school syllabus is a terrifying ordeal. Dogs that bite are terrifying. Yeah. Can't play game, it's terrifying ordeal. Oh, we usually use this phrase to talk about our past experiences. So I played that game and it was a terrifying ordeal, you see. Staying one year lonely in the prison is absolutely a terrifying ordeal. It is. When I saw an accident, I am feeling... No, no, no. You don't feel terrifying ordeal. Something was a terrifying ordeal, right? The previous job was kind of a terrifying ordeal for me. Bravo. That's an amazing uh, sentence. All right, another phrase, sure. I see you are bored with this one. 
to send shivers down somebody's spine. I love this phrase. Now, look at this brilliant picture I put here for you. This orange red thing here that goes down your back is your spine. All right. Now, shiver means shake. Send shiver down your spine. It means your, literally, it means your back starts shaking. But that's not the exact meaning. When something sends shivers down your spine, it means they make you feel afraid. Something that, for example, you take a look at a picture of a house that is spooky, and then that picture sends shivers down your spine. It means it freaks you out. Look at the examples. Let's go a little bit down. Look at the examples. That horror movie sends shivers down my spine. That music sends shivers down my spine. All right? Examples. What sends shivers down your spine? Driving a car sends, shi sends shivers down her spine. Losing my pet was a terrifying ordeal. Bravo. Abacar. Uh, awesome idiom. Yes, it is. Try to learn it and use it. My history exam was a terrifying ordeal. Some politicians send shivers down my spine. Brilliant. Bravo. Well said. Going in tour to the woods is terrifying, is a terrifying ordeal. That sound sends shivers down my spine. Yes. Watching news about terrorists killing innocent people sends shivers down my spine. Bravo. If I saw a ghost, it would send shivers down my spine. My sister sends shivers down my spine. Her voice sends shivers down my spine. Bravo. The lamp shivers my eye. Yeah, but sends shivers down my spine. That's the phrase. Their opinion sends shivers down my spine. Eating frog's leg may be a terrifying or it may be a disgusting experience. I've never tried it. I've heard it's, it tastes like chicken. I've never tried it. The upcoming examination sends shivers down my spine. Bravo. Moving on to the next phrase. Give somebody goosebumps. Look at this picture. Getting a goosebump means when all the hair on your body stands erect, right? That is when something gives you a goosebump or you get a goosebump. Like this picture. You see all the hair, all the little bumps on the skin. Look at this example. The plot of the movie was so amazing that it gave me goosebumps. So after watching the movie, I got goosebumps. All right. Examples. What gives you goosebumps? Sitting on the chair sends shivers down on the spine. No, sitting on the chair. It's so relaxing. My exam results send shiver down my spine. Oh, this white lady gives me goosebumps. Walking into an abandoned house gives me goosebumps. I heard of a spooky movie, what gives me goosebumps, which gives me goosebumps. Walking at night, walking at night on a road makes me, makes me goosebumps. No, gives me goosebumps. Look at the, look at the uh, phrase, guys. Give somebody goosebumps. My science paper gives me goosebumps. The horror movie gave me really bad goosebumps. The way you're teaching gives me goosebumps. <laughs> Electricity has given me goosebumps. That's not goosebumps. Be careful. It may kill you. I got goosebumps after watching Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a very good TV series. My daughter progress report gives me goosebumps. <laughs> because it was good or because it was bad? The singer, the singer's performance gave the audience goosebumps. Your pronunciation gives me goosebumps. So when you hear me pronounce a word, you have bing, right? Walking with a teacher gives me goosebumps. The listening to a scary story gives me goosebumps. Bravo, thank you for the examples. All right, be scared stiff. Now, what is stiff? If something is stiff, it's so hard, you cannot move it. 
My arm is so stiff right now, I cannot move it. Ugh. Or when you have a stiff neck, it means you can't move your neck. It's a stiff. It's a condition. Be scared stiff means to be so scared that you, you don't move. Nothing can move you. You're so scared. Like a piece of wood. That's to be scared stiff. Look at the example. I was scared stiff when he pointed his gun at me. Look at the picture. When he pointed his gun at me, I was scared stiff. Tell me about a time when you were scared stiff. Go. Oh, no, 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 no. I went to the wrong window. All right, here we are. You were terrified on your new video. Was I? Seeing the doctor when I was sick sent shiver down my spine. Yes, 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 yes. I am scared stiff a tree? What? I was scared stiff when I saw my test results. So it's like this. Oh, oh my test results. And then you, you, you cannot move. When I got my exam in my hand, I scared, I was scared stiff. Be scared stiff, guys. Winning the prize gives me goosebumps. That was the previous example. I was scared stiff of English before I watched your videos. I'm so glad I'm making a difference. Um, good evening. Hi. Welcome. I was scared stiff when I thought my dreams won't come true. So sad. But they will come true if you try hard. Don't give up. When I see a lion, I was Oh, I was scared stiff when I saw a lion. Uh, but, but, but I'm scared of losing your videos. I was scared stiff when I got bad, when I had a bad dream. All right, moving on, guys. Scare the hell out of somebody. This is so, so informal. When something scares the hell out of you, it means it really freaks you out. It scares you a lot. For example, that scene of the movie scared the hell out of me. <gasps> it scared the hell out of me. It really scared me. Example sentences. I will just read a few examples because then we have another plan. We're going to read a story together in which I have tried to use all these idioms and phrases that we learned together. Scared the hell out of somebody. Examples. I am scared stiff when he said stop. Stop. I am scared. St I was scared stiff when my friend suddenly passed away. I couldn't read your comment completely, Nilu. She suddenly jumped in front of me and scared the hell out of me. Oh, yeah, that's a good example. I, I like it. Hi, sir. Please help me with my essay. No, example. Make examples. This is a place to make examples. Come on, guys. My shadow scared the hell out of me. Good. It's like you see your shadow and oh my god, that's my shadow. Uh, bu 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 your thumbnail scares the hell out of me. Good. I was scared stiff when I saw the dog. I scared, I scared the hell out when she yelled. No, no, no. When she yelled, it scared the hell out of me. You can say it like this. When I pranked my friends, she was scared the hell out of her. No, no, no. I scared the hell out of her by pulling a prank. Your face scared the hell out of us. <laughs> I scared the hell out of my sister after putting a ghost mask on him. Yeah, 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 don't do it. But actually, that's fun. I mean, during the Halloween, you can scare the hell out of people. I get scared the car out of me? Scared the car out of you? I was scared stiff when the teacher found that I was cheating. When my brother get angry, he get, he scares the hell out of me. Good, good, good examples. Let's move on, guys, to the next idiom. Jump out of skin. To jump out of skin. Now, you know, it's when your ghost, the literal translation, when your ghost leaves your body because you are so scared of something. In that case, you can say, it made me jump out of my skin. Look at the example. The loud noise made me jump out of my skin. Pay attention to the uh, structure of the sentence, guys. The loud noise made me jump out of my skin. It means it really freaked me out. I was really terrified of it. 
Now examples jump out of skin. Tell me about uh, an experience you have, something you saw or heard or something somebody did to you that made you jump out of your skin. Your sound looks like jump out of skin? Ah, that is not correct. And I, I don't know what you were trying to say, so I cannot really correct it. Try again. When I saw the murder in the room, I jumped out of my skin. Or you can say the murder made me jump out of my skin. His anger scared the hell out of children, correct? That sudden terrifying noise made me jump out of my skin. Great example. A bug tried to bite me. That's made me jump out of my skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The horror movie jumped out of my skin. The movie doesn't jump out of your skin. You jump out of your skin. The movie made me jump out of my skin. Okay, clear, clear, clear. The death of my best friend made me jump out of my skin. But so sad to hear it, if it's true. The sound of the thunder makes me jump out of my skin or made me jump out of my skin. Pay attention to the tense. Stranger's touch makes me jump out of my skin. I've seen, I, I've actually seen people. And when I touch them and say, excuse me, they, they jump, really, they, they literally jump and they, oh my God. I've seen people like this. You have to be very careful when you touch strangers. A uh, bear that came from the jungle made me jump out of my skin. Bravo. Excellent. Amazing. Moving on, guys. So proud of you. Great example. Now, let me catch my breath. Just 10 seconds. All right. How to use the new vocabulary. So far, we have learned some new words and phrases to describe something that is scary or to describe and express our own feelings when we are scared. All right, both idioms, phrases, and vocabulary. Now I'm going to show you a text in which I have tried to use all the things we have learned all together, right? So you see how to use them when you're trying to write something. But wait a second, because I have a surprise for you. So this is going to be a break. Let's have a break and let me share with you what surprise I have for you. For those of you who asked about my courses. Now, I started my courses about those who know me. They know that I started the courses about five months ago, four months ago. And I, before that, I had spent three years developing the courses. You know, I have three courses, right? Beginner, intermediate, advanced. And ever since I started the courses, ever since I released them, I received a lot of amazing comments from the students who joined. Like Andrea, I have selected four of them for you. Andrea, who joined the advanced course. Sultana, intermediate course. Enver, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who joined the intermediate course. And Carlos Rodriguez joining the advanced course. Uh, maybe you guys are in the live. If you are, just wave at me. And there are lots of other comments you can see on my website, the, the, the reviews of the courses. So if you're interested to join, you can read the reviews, of course. And in the past couple of days, I've received a lot of requests for discounts. I mean, my phone is full of requests that come to the online chat. Can you please give me discounts? Could you please give us extra discounts? Do you still offer discounts? Give me discounts. Can you tell me when there will be discounts again? I decided that since there are many students who have requested the courses with the discounts, this time, due to the Halloween celebration and this festival, I would do something fun. But what is it? Well, you know, normally I put discounts on each course, like beginner course, 20%, intermediate course, 40%. But this time I've decided to do something crazy. So we have Halloween special. What does it mean? What am I going to do? All right. This is what I have done for you. You know, my beginner code, uh, my beginner course costs $89. My intermediate course costs $99 and my advanced course costs $109. So overall, if you want to join three of them, that would cost $297, but not during Halloween. No. Right now, I have decided that to those students who want to join the three courses, all of them together, beginner and intermediate and advanced, and learn English from zero to hero, 
from beginner to advanced, you can do this by only paying 129. In this way, you will have access to more than 400 lessons and exercises and quizzes, and you can have access to our live speaking lessons. And you will have 24 seven teacher support. I will be in direct contact with you whenever you have questions. Now, don't miss this chance. You can, okay, before we get to the story, you can go to my website. I have uh, created a dedicated page for this offer. And that page is called pokeenglish.com slash Halloween. I will leave the, uh, let's say, the, the address of the page, the URL, in the comments and in the description of this video. So you can go and have a look. Plus, it's going to be really fun because, you know, I have designed the entire website. So let me just leave the, uh, leave the what? The URL for you. Pokeenglish.com slash Halloween. Check this page, guys, because I really love it. I spent some time designing it. Okay. Now, let's move on to the story. Now, guys, this is very important. I, a long time ago, I recorded a video in which I told you how to learn new words so that you can use them when you want to speak English. This is a big problem because many students who learn new words often are unable to use the words when they speak. So you find yourself lost for words. You want to talk about what you were afraid of, but then suddenly you say, yeah, I saw the movie, which was, um, it really made me, um, this happens because you don't know how to learn new words so that you are able to use them when you speak. And the reason why you are unable to do this is because you haven't practiced enough. One good way of practicing uh, of how to use the new words is to write short paragraphs and short stories. Now, here's a short story I have uh, taken for you from another website, which was called English at Home, something like that. I found it to be a very good story. So I'm going to read this for you. Pay attention to one thing. What? To how the new vocabulary and idioms and phrases are being used in this story. Are you ready? I'm going to read it aloud for you. Let me, let me, let me check something. Let me take my picture away from the screen. Yes. Okay. Let's do this. One of the best horror films I have seen is The Blair Witch Project. It tells the story of a terrifying ordeal in the woods of northern USA. Did you pay attention to the first phrase? A terrifying ordeal. Some of the scenes in the film send shivers down my spine. Especially the one when the students ran out of the tent in the middle of the night. When they go back, one of the guys' rocksack has been emptied. You know what a rock sack is? It's a backpack. Okay? When that same guy goes missing the next day, it gives you goosebumps. There are some fabulous sound effects, especially the ones of the wind blowing and howling. When you hear the crying voices at the end of the film, it will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. This is another idiom, guys. Well, you know, when something makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up, it scares you. Perhaps the scariest part of the film is at the end, when you see one of the surviving students literally shake with fear in the corner of the basement. Another good phrase, shake with fear. It certainly frightened the life out of me. Another good phrase, frighten the life out of somebody. You see, there are many different ways of saying how you feel or expressing your feelings. That is why I always say, try to learn as many new idioms and phrases as you can. Of course, you can always say, I'm scared, and that's correct, and that's good, and that's easy. But that's 
you know, you can make it more beautiful. That is the beauty of a language, to have many different ways of expressing something. Let's continue. Where was I? Oh, okay. It certainly frightened the life out of me. Oh, sorry. It certainly frightened the life out of the girl when she saw him. And I jumped out of my skin at the end when the camera stopped filming. The film scared the hell out of me for weeks afterwards. And I'm ashamed to say that I wouldn't go into an empty room in the house unless there was someone there with me. If you haven't seen The Blair Witch Project, don't. Because it will scare the hell out of you. All right, guys, and that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Let me take another look at the comment section. Sir, 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 sir. Yes, don't spam, guys. I would be grateful for that. That's the end of the lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Wow, we've been here for about an hour. Amazing. Amazing. That was a full class, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to let me know how, how you felt about this live in the comments. We will probably go live again in the coming days. So if you like, you can join again, and we will continue this series of live lessons. Bye-bye. Hi. Sure, you're welcome. Is there any PDF for this lesson? No. But if you like, I can share. Yes, I can share the PDF file of the presentation to you. I will send it to your email address. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.